we have been discussing uh, the properties of web guides as we have seen that web guides are essentially conduits through which uh, electromagnetic energy is transmitted from one point to another and uh, so uh, we had earlier discussed uh, a web guide which was basically two semi infinite uh, metallic planes uh, today uh, we will be um, discussing initially the rectangular wave guides which we introduced uh, last time. So, it is basically one of the dimensions is uh, still infinite, but otherwise we have uh, two dimensions namely uh, it is a rectangular parallel piped uh, of infinite length uh, cross section being a by b in the x and y direction and z direction is the direction in which the wave would propagate. Uh, we had seen that uh, the Maxwell's equations, which uh, we had, I will just uh, illustrate uh, one of them, uh, which was essentially, for example, del cross of E equal to minus, uh, well, dB by dt, but I will write it as minus mu dH by dt. There are no uh, currents uh, or uh, sources, no displacement currents del cross h no as there are no currents. So, there is no current term here is um, epsilon d e by d t and what we are going to do is to take as before the time dependence as e or h uh, they go as e to the power i omega t. As a result this d b by d t that gives you uh, that results in essentially a multiplication by i times omega. So, as a result you can see the first equation here which uh, is essentially this equation because this became uh, minus i omega times mu times h. So, if you take its x components it will become del cross is x components and del cross is x component is as you can see here uh, d by d y of e z. Uh, minus d by d z of e y, but we have seen that since the propagation direction is z direction. So, d by d z essentially mean, means multiplication by minus gamma, because the propagation goes as e to the power minus gamma z. And uh, uh, so, therefore, this equation became d by d y of e z plus gamma times e y is this. And similarly, this is uh, our Faraday's law where uh, well this is this was Faraday's law and this is the uh, Ampere uh, Maxwell's law. So, this is uh, del cross h uh, x component which is d by d y of h z minus d by d z which is same as plus gamma times h y is i omega epsilon e x and I have written down essentially all the six equations six components uh, three components of magnetic field and three components of the electric field in this uh, transparency. Now, so what we want to do essentially is to realize that uh, these six equations I can cast them such that every component. So, I have six components. So, I, I will choose any two components. For example, uh, I will choose E z and H z and I can manipulate these equations to write them uh, each component explicitly in terms of the z component of E and h only. So, uh, we had talked about it last time, but let us uh, go through it again. So, this equation which we talked about for example, the x component of the electric field i omega epsilon E x. This is this equation and that is del cross h x component and which is uh, as we have seen x component meaning d by d y of uh, h z and uh, d by d z minus d by d z which is plus gamma h y and plus d by d y of h z. And uh, so, what I do next is this that this h y uh, which can come from here that is the y component of this I will write it so, I already have a gamma and you can see that if I take y component of this equation, 
I will essentially get I divide it by 1 over i omega mu and y component means d by d z of e x minus d by d x of um, e z. And so, therefore, this equation becomes gamma by i omega mu times e x plus d by d x of e z plus d by d y of h z. And uh, now, what I do is this that uh, there is I have this x e x there and that I write down again by writing down wh what is this. Uh, so, you write notice that uh, I can write this e x in terms of uh, for example, I could eliminate e x from these two equations and write them in terms of uh, the other components. So, if you do all that then it turns out if you do all that this is a bit of an algebra, but fairly straightforward that you can write E x in terms of the derivative of E z and h z. So, I have chosen for no particular reason, but because of the fact that the z component z direction is my direction of propagation. I have written E x in terms of derivative of E z and derivative of h z. And if you uh, simplified all this uh, this is the way the equation works out, where k square is gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon. This is and, and this you can do for each one of the other components that is e y h uh, x and h y. And this gives you a complete list of the equations uh, where e x, e y, h x and h y are written in terms of the derivatives of e z and h z only and uh, other than omega epsilon and mu which are of course, there uh, we have one quantity there which is k square which is appearing as gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon. So, this is the set of equations. Now, what I will do now is this that uh, now decide the following that we define what are called modes of propagation. Now, this is done by uh, selecting uh, or rather classifying these solutions in terms of uh, such propagations for which the z component of electric field is equal to 0 that is one group uh, z component being the direction of propagation uh, if z component of electric field namely E z becomes equal to 0 it means that the electric field is transverse. So, uh, this is called transverse electric solution T e we have seen this earlier also. And similarly, another group would be T z uh, T m namely transverse magnetic field for which the h z is equal to 0 and E z is not equal to 0. And we had seen earlier that in uh, uh, case of um, the parallel plate wave guides there are uh, uh, also very special solutions for which both E z and h z were equal to 0 and uh, uh, this we called as the transverse electromagnetic or T e m mode, but we will see that that was a rather special case in case of parallel plate wave guides, but in this case we do not have such a situation. So, uh, coming back to our uh, equation uh, the equation that we had uh, for the components of the electric field that is the Helmholtz equation was basically d square by d x square plus d square by d y square plus d square by d z square which is nothing but gamma square uh, times your uh, any component of the electric field actually it is minus gamma square because uh, e to the power ok. Let us write it as gamma square because e to the power minus gamma z we have taken, but if this is propagating actually this will be i beta. So, therefore, the, it will come to that side and that any component let us say e alpha that is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon times the same component. This was the equation that we had. So, as a result what you are getting is this that if you bring this to that side 
you find at I get d square by d x square plus d u square by d s d y square plus gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon. If you recall this we had defined as k square. So, therefore, this is k square times any component of electric field, but we are interested in let us say uh, we are talking about T e mode for which E z is equal to 0. So, every solution can be written in terms of H z only. So, this quantity is equal to 0 and H z because z direction is basically infinite. So, the only dependence it can have is on x y and that quantity is equal to 0. So, this is the equation for which we need a solution. So, what we said is that you can solve this equation by what is known as separation of variable. So, h z of x y you write it as some quantity x which depends upon x only and some quantity y which depends upon y only. So, you plug this in because this depends only on x. So, what you find is y times d square x by d x square plus x times d square y by d x d y square plus k square times x y that is equal to 0. Now, if you divide this equation by x y all through you get 1 over x d square x by d x square plus 1 over y d square y by d y square plus k square is equal to 0. Now, we are going to do this technique incidentally is known as separation of variable. So, you notice one thing that I can write this equation as equal to uh, a 1 over x d square x by d x square plus k square is equal to minus 1 over y d square y by d y square. Now, notice one thing this quantity depends upon x only, this quantity depends upon y only and you want for whatever x and y these two must always be equal. Now, obviously, this is possible if each one of them is a constant and let us call that constant as equal to k y square. So, this plus this is equal to that is equal to k y square. Now, so as a result you notice that these equations are well known equations to us. For instance, this equation is uh, familiar to us in simple harmonic motion because this tells me d square y by d y square plus k y square y is equal to 0. So, as a result my solution for x and y now and the same thing is true for this quantity also, what you could do is you could define a quantity which is k x square, which is uh, such that it is equal to k square minus k y square. So, as a result both of them have the same structure and my solution to these equations then become x is some constant c 1 cosine k x x plus c 2 sin k x x and likewise capital Y is c 3 cosine k x x plus c 4 sin sorry yeah this is k y y and this is sin k y y. So, my total solution is a product of this with this. In other words, this is a product of terms like cosine cosine, cosine sine, sine cosine and sine sine. So, this is this is what I have got. Now, and uh, as we have seen that k square is equal to k x square plus k y square. So, once I have got this equation, so, I am writing down uh, solution to uh, my h z, h uh, z because we have taken T e mode. 
So, E z is equal to 0. So, h z is essentially a function of this into this. Now, let us look at how to determine some of these things. The thing that you have to realize is this that if you take for example, uh, go back to the picture of the rectangular parallel pipe. So, notice this is uh, the z direction is infinite and uh, so here I have got uh, the uh, x y plane uh, for example, x is equal to 0 here. Now, these planes namely x is equal to 0, uh, x is equal to a, uh, y is equal to 0, y is equal to a on these uh, surfaces my uh, tangential component of the electric field must be equal to 0. Uh, and uh, notice this that uh, my tangential components will be related to uh, or will be equal to the E x or E y, because I have got these surfaces for example, this surface uh, is in the x y plane and so therefore, uh, this is at z equal to 0. So, let us look at what does it give me. So, take for example, E x. Now, E x is the electric field. Uh, which is essentially the tangential component of the electric field at y is equal to 0 and at y is equal to b. Now, if you looked up uh, the set of equations that we had written down, uh, the E x for the T e mode namely e if E z is equal to 0 works out to some constant d by d y of h z. Now, remember this quantity has to be equal to 0 for y is equal to 0 as well as y equal to b. What it implies is at y equal to 0 and y is equal to b, my derivative of h z with respect to y must be equal to 0. Remember that my h uh, z is a function of uh, consists of four terms cosine k x x, sin uh, cosine k y y, cosine uh, k x x into sin k y y etcetera. Now, if you want the derivative of h z with respect to y to become equal to 0. So, uh, it goes back here. So, my let me write down what is x into y which is my h z. This is c 1 cosine k x x. Uh, into C 3 cosine k y y plus C 1 uh, cosine k x x C 4 sin k y y plus C 2 uh, into C 3 sin k x x cosine k y y plus c 2 into c 4 sin k x x into sin k y y. Now, let us look at what are we trying to say. We are saying that derivative of this, derivative of this with respect to y should be 0. Now, if you are differentiating with respect to y, this term for instance will give you k y sin k y y. This term will give you k y cos k y y and like this. Now, I want uh, that for y is equal to 0, this term should give me 0. So, that now this has become sin k y y. So, I do not have a problem with this term becoming equal to 0. Now, uh, so, what am I actually left with? You notice that the, the term that I must have, uh, this will tell me that I must have C 3 into C 1, this term must become equal to 0 etcetera. Now, if you do that, then ultimately you are left with, because these are the four conditions to be satisfied. Ultimately, you are left with that I can have h z only given in terms of uh, this type of an equation. That is c times cosine m pi by a times x times cosine n pi by b times y. Remember, my uh, boundary conditions are 
that the tangential component of the electric field which comes as derivatives of H z and the normal component of the magnetic field they will be 0 on the plates. So, that, that tells me that H z is just a product of cosine into cosine and these facts that uh, the k x and k y becoming equal to m pi by a and n pi by b is because I want these electric fields to vanish at x is equal to a as well as y is equal to b. So, as a result if you now want to write down your full equations h z which is a function of x y z is this solution which you have just now obtained times e to the power minus gamma z and k square which we had seen is omega square mu epsilon plus gamma square k square is k x square which is m pi by a whole square and plus k y square which is n pi by b whole square. So, these these are my uh, solutions for h z and e z is equal to 0. So, I will uh, just leave this transparency for some time. Uh, this tells you that once you have got h z of z, uh, you can obtain e x, e y, h x and h y uh, purely in terms of the h z. So, these are uh, the things which are there. So, as we have seen k square is this quantity and this is what it is. Now, if you look at gamma now, gamma is given by m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square minus omega square mu epsilon. Now, this tells me, now you remember that my propagation went as e to the power minus gamma z and we have seen that gamma is given by root of m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square minus omega square mu epsilon. Now, in order that this may be a propagating solution, I want gamma to be imaginary. Otherwise, it is an attenuating solution. Now, in order that gamma is imaginary, it tells me there is a minimum frequency omega c given by uh, well, you want omega square mu epsilon to be greater than this. So, omega c is given by 1 over mu epsilon times square root of m pi by a whole square plus n pi by b whole square. And of course, uh, so this if you like is my cutoff frequency. What I have written down here is the uh, this was of course, uh, your angular frequency and this is the normal f c which is omega c by 2 pi. So, this is a minimum cutoff frequency, this is a cutoff frequency for T e m n mode. Now, notice that if you take for instance T e 1 0 mode, so m is equal to 1, n is equal to 0 okay? and this depending upon which one you call to what. Uh, this is what is known as a dominant mode because this is the this is a mode for which the frequency is minimum whether it is t 1 0 or uh, it could be t 0 1 it would depend upon which one of these dimensions is smaller or bigger and uh, so therefore that is the cutoff frequency and likewise you could uh, work with e z that is h z uh, equal to 0 uh, transverse magnetic mode and E z is not equal to 0. And if you did exactly the same uh, algebra as we uh, talked about earlier, you find that for this T m mode E uh, E z works out to be a product of sin into sin. Now, notice because this is product of two sin function, unlike the T e mode which was the product of two cosine function. I cannot have m or n to be equal to 0, because if it is then E z will be equal to 0. Now, I did not have that problem with uh, uh, the cosine function, there all that I required is both m and n should not be 0, because if they were then that would be a constant, but uh, in this case 
if either m or n becomes equal to 0, e z vanishes and once e z vanishes, since h z is equal to 0, all my components would trivially vanish. So, because of that, the T m mode has a higher cutoff frequency than that of T e mode and hence T e mode is known as the dominant mode. So, let us look at um, the uh, some minor properties. Supposing there is propagation, again we are back to uh, both it could be this will be valid for both T e as well as T m mode. So, when there is a cutoff, when the frequency is above the cutoff, uh, the propagation vector beta, which is uh, the same as i beta being equal to gamma, is simply square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m pi by a whole square minus n pi by b whole square. And we define omega c as 1 over root of mu epsilon by into square root of this quantity. So, that beta can be written as root mu epsilon omega square minus omega c square uh, raised to the power half and omega is greater than omega c for propagate in order that propagation may take place. Now, if you have this, so beta is your propagation vector. Now, remember that the group velocity of the wave is given by d omega by d beta, uh, where uh, I have uh, already seen what is the relationship between omega and beta, which is gives me 1 over root mu epsilon. Incidentally, this quantity is nothing but the velocity of light if it is in vacuum multiplied by 1 minus omega square by c square. But the phase velocity, uh, this of course, is uh, less than the uh, speed of light in vacuum as it ought to be, but the phase velocity which is simply omega by beta is given by this expression namely c by square root of 1 minus omega c square omega square. Now, if you take the product of the group velocity with the phase velocity that gives you 1 over mu epsilon and if you are dealing with vacuum uh, between the plates uh, then it is just equal to c square. Um, notice one thing that in case of a T e mode, uh, if you took the ratio of E x to H y, if you recall when we talked about the uh, propagation of uniform waves in uh, free space, uh, we had seen the ratio of E x to H y was nothing but uh, what we called as the characteristic impedance. Now, here also something very similar works out. E x by H y is i omega mu by gamma and we have seen gamma is i beta. So, it is omega mu by beta and by substituting for beta, you get this is equal to omega mu by root mu epsilon into this factor here. And this is what we would denote as eta T e, which means it is the characteristic impedance corresponding to the T e mode. So, E x by H y works out to eta T e and because of the directions E y by H x also works out in magnitude to be eta T e, but is given by minus eta T e. Now, let us look at uh, the power transmission in the mode. So, we have seen that uh, what we are looking for is transmission of power, which is uh, designated by the pointing vector. Pointing vector in terms of complex electric and real field uh, magnetic field is given by half of real part of E cross H star. And just now we have seen that uh, E x and H y is are related by this eta factor. So, therefore, uh, I can write the h as uh, or e. Uh, so, here what I have got e cross h star real part and you remember I am in T e mode. So, my z component is 0. So, as a result the remaining components are given by e x h y star minus e y h x star. Uh, what I have not written here is that because the direction of propagation is along the z direction. So, I have essentially taken the z component of E cross h star. And if you now write down that h y by E x is eta, uh, eta t e. So, you get E x square plus E y square divided by 2 eta. So, this is my average pointing vector. And uh, the power that is transmitted 
is since the z direction is the direction of propagation, it flows through at any point of time through x y plane. So, therefore, you have to take the pointing vector and uh, average pointing vector and integrate it from uh, d x d y x going from 0 to a and y going from 0 to b. And if you do that, this is the expression because you have to uh, substitute the expressions for E x and E y and do this integration. And supposing you had a lossy waveguide. Now, if you had a lossy waveguide, then uh, we have seen that uh, gamma will not become uh, imaginary, but gamma will become real. And by designating its real part as alpha, we get this quantity to be proportional because there is an E and there is an H to e to the power minus 2 alpha z. So, that is the rate at which the power would attenuate. We will come back to this uh, point a little later. So, if you look at what we said just now, the power transmission is given by this expression. Uh, the uh, you have to these are the two terms and you can do this integrations because they are fairly straightforward cosine square and sin square terms. Just uh, if you do the integration each one of them will give you a by this will give you a by 2, this will give you b by 2 and so therefore, this is the way they will work out. So, this is the expression for the power transmission. Having talked about uh, rectangular uh, parallel pipe waveguide, I am going to now uh, close the remaining sides as well. That is what I have got is what is known as a rectangular cavity. So, I have got electromagnetic waves which are confined within the boundaries of a rectangular parallel pipe. I have taken the dimensions to be A, B and D. I have not taken A, B and C because C is the velocity of light. I do not want any confusion. So, I have taken uh, this is what is known as a resonating cavity. The this is very similar to for example, like an LC circuit. Uh, we will say just as LC circuit is used to store electrical energy, a resonating cavity is used to store uh, electromagnetic energy. The uh, typical resonating circuits uh, however, have a great advantage over uh, the um, LC circuits because these have frequencies upward of a few hundred megahertz and uh, they turn out to be less lossy than LC circuit. Now, remember when we talked about the parallel piped uh, rectangular waveguides, we had not talked about losses at all, but we know that losses are facts of life. So, therefore, we have to worry about losses, you can minimize it, uh, but we will be talking about it as we go along. The, the technique of discussing the resonant cavity is very similar to what we did. So, let us first look at the wave equation. Remember we had said del square E any component E alpha x y or z is given by minus omega square mu epsilon E alpha. So, what you do is this, now this is the equation which we need to solve del square is d x s d by d x s square plus d by d y square plus d by z square. Now, I will use the same technique namely the technique of separation of variable by assuming that this E alpha remember my alpha can be x y or z component whichever fancies me. This is written as a product of capital X which is a function of x only capital Y which is a function of y only and capital Z, which is a function of z only. And what I do is exactly what we did earlier. So, if you write down this is d square by d x square of E alpha, which is x y z. So, this gives me x of x multiplied by y z plus d square by d y square of y 
multiplied by x z plus d square by d z square z multiplied by x y. This is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon into x into y into z. So, if you divide this equation all through by x y z, you find uh, this thing that 1 over x d square x by d x square plus 1 over y d square y by d y square plus 1 over z d square z by d z square is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon. So, what we do is this. Now, we, we exactly work the same way as we did earlier. This is a function of x only, this is a function of y only, this is a function of z only. These three things must be added in such a way that for all values of x, y and z, it must give me a constant. Now, obviously, that is a tall order unless this is a constant, this is a constant and this is a constant and these three constants added together gives me the third constant. Now, so what I require is d square x by d x square that is equal to a constant. So, let me write it as a minus k x square times x. then uh, d square y by d y square equal to minus k y square times y d square z by d z square is equal to minus k z square z. So, if I do that this term becomes minus k x square, this term becomes minus k y square, this term becomes minus k z square. So, that this equation will be satisfied if I have k x square plus k y square plus k z square is equal to omega square mu epsilon. This is the technique of separation of variable. The advantage is if you look at any one of these equations these are equations which are known to us in solution of simple harmonic motion. So, that they all give me linear combination of the sum of x and cos k x x, sin k x x uh, etcetera. That is supposing I am writing E alpha. So, I have got this term which is my capital X, which is A alpha cos k x x plus B alpha sin k x x and similarly y and similarly z. Now, what do you do from here? The what I do now is this. I now know that I have a rectangular parallel pipe. So, therefore, my uh, x component for instance uh, will be equal to 0 either when y is 0 or d because that is one plane on which my x component of x direction is the tangential direction or z is equal to 0 and z is equal to d. So, E x of x y z let me illustrate this here is equal to 0 for y is equal to 0, y is equal to b, z is equal to 0 and z is equal to d. Now, look at what it means. If I want this quantity to be equal to 0, for y is equal to 0. Now, substitute y is equal to 0 here. So, this term automatically goes away. This term automatically goes away and uh, I am left with a x cos k x. So, c alpha cos k y y remains. Okay. Now, the so this term will become 0 and I will have c alpha cos k y y. Now, I want that to be 0 for all values uh, all for y is equal to b as well. Now, if I do that, then that tells me that my k y must take values m pi by b, because then only 
this term will become equal to 0. I cannot have both c is equal to d 0, d is equal to 0 simultaneously, because if I did, then the entire E alpha will go away. And likewise, you substitute that this field must become equal to 0 for z is equal to 0, which will make this, this term go away and uh, uh, as a result my E alpha term must be equal to 0 and then for z is equal to d. So, if you put that, then I get E alpha this term remains and from these two only the sin k y y and sin k z z remains and uh, the factor d alpha into f alpha I have combined it into one constant which is E x 0. So, this is my structure of E x with m becoming equal to plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etcetera etcetera. Okay, so, that is E x x. Now, likewise I go to E y and uh, well the argument is essentially the same the just as you got uh, when you had E x you got sin k y y and sin k z z and the x part had both the terms. Here also I will get since it is E y the y part will have cosine and sin the x parts will have only signs and k x will be l pi by a k z will be equal to n pi by d and likewise for e z as well. Now, how do you proceed from here? Now, notice that irrespective of uh, my solutions, my del dot of e must be equal to 0. Del dot of e is d by d x of e x plus d by d y of e y plus d by d z of e z. Since, I have already obtained e x, e y and e z, what I require is that simply differentiate. So, when you differentiate cos k x x, you get minus a x sin k x x, uh, sin k x x give me b x. So, this is uh, what you get, this is first term is obtained by differentiating with respect to x, the second term differentiating with respect to y, the third term differentiating with respect to z. Now, unlike E, which must be equal to 0, the tangential component must be equal to 0 at the boundaries, my del dot of E must be equal to 0 anywhere. For any value of x, y, z, my del dot of E must be equal to 0. Now, so what you do is, for instance, look at this equation, try to satisfy this del dot of E equal to 0 at for instance try to satisfy it at x is equal to 0. Now, if your x is equal to 0, let me first dispose of the last two terms. If x is equal to 0, these two terms go away. Remember, I have said this relationship is valid at all values of x, y, z. In particular, for x equal to 0 and whatever y, z you prefer. So, when I put x equal to 0, these two terms go away. But if I put x equal to 0, I am left with b x cos k x x sin k y y sin k z z. b x is a constant which can come here. So, this is what I am left with. Now, identically what you do is this for example, uh, so that gets me a d y equal to 0 and you can again do this for y is equal to 0 x and z arbitrary, z is equal to 0 x and y arbitrary. If you do that, 1 by 1, one of these terms uh, constants will go away and you will be left with terms of this type x component cos k x x, the two others are sign, y components cos k y y, the two other things are sign, z components cos k z z, two other things are sign and k x is l pi by a, k y is m pi by b, k z is n pi by d. Notice that I cannot have L, M and N becoming simultaneously 0, that is not permitted, because if I did, then this E will trivially go, go become 0, uh, because at uh, x equal to b for example, uh, y equal to b, this will make sin k y y equal to 0. So, these integers cannot be simultaneously 0. So, I write down del dot of E is equal to 0, since all of them are uh, of sign because this is my E. So, when I do del dot of E, I get d by d x will give me a sign. So, this is the way it will be that 
all the signs are common, I get E x 0 k x, E y 0 k y, E y 0 k k z, this is wrongly written. Now, this equation has to be valid for all values of x, y and z inside the cavity. As a result, this tells me E x k x plus E y k y plus E z k z, this is to be corrected is equal to 0. So, let me write it down since that equation is slightly wrongly written. So, I must have E x 0 k x plus E y 0 k y plus E z 0 k z. Since E x E y E z 0s are E x 0 E y 0 E z 0s are uh, the magnitudes of the components of the electric vector k x k y and k z are components of the propagation vector. This equation simply tells me that the electric field direction is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation vector. Returning back to the uh, wave equation I had del square of E. So, del square is d square by d x square plus d square by d y square plus d square by d z square. This quantity is equal to minus omega square mu epsilon. Remember in each of the components, take any component, I have to differentiate only the cosine part twice. So, I get k x square plus k y square plus k z square equal to omega square mu epsilon. And of course, I know that k x is equal to l pi by a. So, it is l square pi square by a square plus m square pi square by b square plus n square pi square by d square is equal to omega square. Supposing I am in uh, vacuum, then omega square by c square. So, this is uh, what I have got. Now, like we classified the waves in a um, rectangular waveguide or in a um, infinite semi infinite waveguide, it is possible to talk about the classification in terms of T e and T m mode as well. Uh, generally, conventionally, the longer direction will be considered to be the propagation direction, but of course, it really is not particularly important here. So, if I take E z is equal to 0, which is my T e mode. So, the I will label the modes by T e l m n. Now, let in this case, since it is T e, my E z is equal to 0, which implies that E z 0 is equal to 0 and this implies that E x 0 k x plus E y 0 k y is equal to 0 this is because e dot k is equal to 0. So, I am left with now e x and e y. So, e x I have written down e x 0 cos k x x, e y is u y 0 cos k y y, the other two components are signed and you can now determine the corresponding h components, the components of the magnetic field h x. This is uh, once your e z is 0, you can write them down and these are the expressions for the h x, h y and h z. So, uh, this is fairly standard just a differentiation and uh, you can just look at it and work it out yourself. Okay. Let me, let me now uh, specialize it to a particular mode. Uh, supposing I am working out with a T e 101 mode that is L is equal to 1, M is equal to 0 and N is equal to 1. Just going back a little bit, you notice that if M is equal to 0, then by E x becomes equal to 0. So, the only component of electric field that survives is E y, which will be given by E y 0 sin k x x. This term is 1 
and into sin k z z. So, I have written that down that you have got E x is equal to 0 and uh, normally it is conventional to write the T E 1 0 1 mode in terms of the uh, h z 0 that is the amplitude of h z which is the one which determines the T 1 0 1 mode. So, for example, h z is this quantity here. So, this quantity here uh, remember k y is equal to 0. So, this quantity here E y 0 k x by minus i omega mu will be designated as h z 0. So, this is what I have done here. Now, if you plug those in then I will write h z as equal to h z 0 cos k x x sin k z z the y thing is not there and uh, using my standard equations uh, relating the E y and H x to H z, I can write E y and H x like this H y which uh, again has a proportionality with sin k y y is equal to 0 because k y is equal to 0. So, this gives me the modes the fields for 1 0 1. Now, the next thing that we need to do is uh, to find out an expression for the loss in case of the uh, uh, resonating waveguides. This is called resonating because you notice that because of this relationship that we had that uh, omega square mu epsilon is given by this. The omegas that are permitted are very specified frequencies. See, in the rectangular parallel pipe waveguide that we had, where z direction was the direction of propagation, we had seen that there was a minimum uh, frequency above which the propagation took, took place. In this case, however, there are specified frequencies at which the propagation will take place depending upon the mode that you have got because omega square mu epsilon is L square pi square by A square plus m square pi square by B square plus n square pi square by D square. And once you have fixed L, m and n, the omega can take only specified values and because of that we call it resonating uh, uh, modes because unlike the other two waveguides that we had talked about. In this case, there is no cutoff frequency above which the propagation takes place. There are frequencies at which the propagation takes place. So, let us uh, uh, look at this. So, as I said in the beginning, the purpose of a, a resonating cavity is to provide a mechanism for storing electromagnetic energy. However, in principle though we have said that uh, my walls are perfectly conducting, the there would be losses in the dielectric. So, with every cycle by cycle I mean supposing my z direction is taken as a propagation direction. So, my wave would proceed towards z is equal to d come back to z equal to 0. So, with every cycle a certain amount of loss will be there. Now, what I do is this I define the quality factor which is also known as the q factor of uh, a cavity as the ratio of the energy that is stored uh, in uh, the cavity to the amount of energy that is lost through the walls of the cavity every cycle. So, that is that is defined as the q. Now, how do I calculate this q? I will just uh, begin a calculation today and we will try to complete it next time. So, first is you notice the numerator. The numerator is the amount of energy that is stored in the cavity. Now, we had seen that the 
average energy that is stored in a electromagnetic field is given by uh, epsilon by 2 e square. There is an additional 1 over 2 has come in because of my time factor the sin square omega t cos square omega t average. So, it is epsilon by 2 and you integrate over the volume of e square d v. Now, I am in T e mode e z is equal to 0 e x was automatically equal to 0. So, therefore, I have got simply e y square to take care of. If you put in the expression for e y square which is written in terms of h z 0, you will notice that e y is product of sin k x x and sin k z z. So, I have got sin square k x x sin square k z z. So, the d y integration gave me a b and these integrations you can easily do by writing sin square in terms of cosine 2 sin, sin square theta in terms of cosine 2 theta and integrating this out. Now, if you integrate that out you get the amount of energy that is stored to be given by this. The next question is what does one do to calculate the amount of loss. So, first thing that we realize is the losses must take place through the walls of the cavity. Now, I assume that the walls are made of good conductors. Now, if the walls are made of good conductors, then the skin depth that is the depth to which the fields penetrate will be small the skin depth is low. Now, if the skin depth is small, I can assume the field in these is the same as the field on the surfaces of these conductors conducting boundaries. So, I also know that if I have a tangential component of the magnetic field that gives me a surface current. It is this surface current which I will need to calculate on each of the six phases and once I know what is the resistance of each one of these phases, I simply calculate how much is the joule loss on each of these phases. This is a calculation which I will leave for the next lecture.